Well, hello there, friends and neighbors and fellow anglers. Anglers, that is the key word. Because you know, as an angler, you're always looking for an edge. You're always looking for that edge, be it a better hook, a better rig, better presentation of a bait. You're always looking for that edge. That's the reason why lure sales are such a big deal. The lure manufacturers know that you are constantly looking for that next best thing, that edge to get on the fish. I'm going to show you something here, and I'm going to look for feedback. This is for feedback, because this is just... Uh, at this point, it's just an idea. I haven't done anything yet. So I'm going to show you something of a video that was very popular. This rig right here, this is my strong arm rig. I'll put a link below in the video description to the video where I show you how to make these. And what it is... It is a rig. This is an extra long one. It is a rig that I use for all my bottom fishing in swift current in the St. Johns River, Jacksonville, Florida. And what it is here, it's a cross line, cross line three way. About a number four, I guess, is what this would generically be referred to as. I'm looking through the viewfinder here, trying to get you the best visual of it. And what I do, if you look very closely there, is I thread Mason hard type nylon 80 pound through there and crimp it in such a way that it makes this mason hard time not hard, hard type nylon stick out and on the very end i make a crimp and put a swivel on on this swivel i come off with maybe 10 12 inches of sacrificial leader usually for my type of fishing it's 30 pound mono but this mason hard type nylon is nylon it's not mono this stuff is so strong i could pull my truck through a walmart parking lot with it it is brutally strong and resilient and doesn't chafe. I mean, I've had this these things stuck in rocks and ripped them out and broke the hook and the leader off. So all I do is tie a leader to here and then the hook. But what it does, and I'm not going to go through every bit of the minutia of my rig here because that's not the intent of this video. But you tie off here. You tie to here. So when you have a sinker on and you're tied off, okay, I'm tied here and the sinker's here, it points the mason hard type nylon, since it's very rigid and stiff, it points it down. And as you flip it out behind the boat and you're going 40 feet down, in heavy duty current most of the time it's going down and this mason is so st stiff that it wants to point down and it holds your leader away from the main line here so you don't get all these frazzles if you take just a three-way and i use a duloc snap of various sizes on this end if you just took a three-way like this with 
for, forget this masons here and you just tie 30 pound test to here about 12 inches long and you put a shrimp or a chunk of mullet or pogie or whatever I'm using for bait in salt water. You flip it out behind the boat in our current. That just leader tied to right here is just going to go up and it's going to spin and frazzle in, get tangled in your main line. So this is my rig. I developed this over years and years of saying to myself, there's got to be a better way. Well, that brings me to the point of what I'm going to ask you all, my subscribers, my anglers out there. You know, I was watching, and I mean, it's old now, old, 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 but one of my favorite shows on television, which I never watched television, or I watched, you know, television, I guess you could say, over my parents' house. I go over there to visit, right? And we always sit after dinner or something, and we watch Shark Tank. Either new ones or old ones or years old. It's just so entertaining. If you never watch Shark Tank, it's all the, the million billionaires, and they're going to invest in somebody's business or not invest. Well, there was that guy from, I think he was from New York. I think he was from New York or up that way, who came up with, because his claim to fame was he caught a like world record or state record or something strike bass. And what he was doing, and he claimed this helps, which, hey, the guy's an angler. He's thinking. Well, he made a rattling sinker. Rattling bank sinker. A plain old old-fashioned, teardrop-shaped bank sinker. And inside of it was a rattle. And they were quite expensive. I saw them. I've seen them. Six, seven dollars for a four or six ouncer that rattles. You know, lure companies spend billions a year on trying to attract fish. And one of the things they always do is try to create sound. Rattles and allure, all that kind of stuff. Sound can be an attractant because fish like this big old redfish here, fish like that, that speckled sea trout right there can be very curious. They come to sound, especially if it sounds like something that sounds like food. And ticking, that's what that guy was making. Rattling on the bottom was another way of drawing those stripers into his bait. He wasn't making lures. He was making an edge for live bait fishing. So, I get to always thinking constantly, because where I fish in the St. John's River, that fish can't see its fin in front of its face. Fish 40 feet down cannot see in our muddy, dirty, tannin water. That deep? No. No, they can't see anything. So here's the deal. 99% of all these fish, now a speckled sea trout up in some shallow water, can probably see because I believe many times they're kind of sight feeders, okay? Sight and sound. But Mr. Redfish, he's just, you know, he's just rooting around the bottom, always rooting around, looking for something to eat. So we'll have bait attached to this here with the little short leader coming off of it. And that guy was making a sinker that bounced on the bottom and rattled. I just thought, man, What's an easy way to make something that kind of rattles, all right? Something that kind of rattles around out there fishing on the bottom. So I came up with this. Chain. I happen to have this chain. It happens to not be all rusty. It happens to have some seriously good galvanize on it. Well, I weighed this. This is like two and three quarter ounces. 
And what's it do? It makes noise. So, what do you think about this? I open up my snap. Now, I can put any size snap I want on there. I got little ones, and I got these big ones. These are like a number five. I can take this, snap it on there, close it up. Close it up. Have that. Now that looks a little crazy, right? It looks crazy. A sinker belongs on there. Right? Yeah, I know. I know all this. I know how crazy this looks. And I'm always fishing on what I hope to be hard bottom. Shell, rock, anything that's hard. Sand, not hard. Mud, not hard. There's an old saying I go by. H a r d equals f i s h just that simple hard equals fish rocks concrete shell bottom reef whatever it happens to be for you in your area here it's shell and rock nothing else i don't like to fish on sand or just sand at least broken up shell something. So when you hit your sinker on the bottom, you can hear it go thud, thud. Being that this, and it rattles all on its own. Huh, it's just a thought folks. It's just a thought. This is something that I will experiment. It's not nothing I'm going to take out for passengers, you know, and eight-year-olds and whatever out bottom fishing and give them all a, a three uh, length of chain. It's something that I will try. It's just like the strong arm. I was using variations of this before I ever turned it over into customer's usage. I don't know. Maybe somebody out there's tried it. Maybe somebody's got a better way. Maybe it, you don't need a way. But I'm always looking for that edge. And I got two sections here. And I'm thinking about the next time I go out and I'm doing some bottom fishing. And we don't need, you know, mega weight. This is, like I said, like two and a half ounces right here. I'd be laughed off the ocean if I used this in Miami. If I was down in Miami and even using this strong arm rig, they'd laugh. Oh, my God, they'd be laughing their ass off. We have it good, but then we have it bad in Jacksonville, too. Because we can get away with any kind of rig. We can kind of get away with any rig because the fish don't care because they can't see it. Where other places, whether it's really clear, they got to use fluorocarbon and acrylic sinkers and hardly any terminal tackle, I can get away with this terminal tackle. The fish do not care one bit because they can't see it. They're coming to the bait for the smell and maybe... They're coming to the sound. What do you think? I'm always thinking, what is that edge? And I saw that guy years and years ago with the rattle and sinker. They put rattles in lures. You put glass rattles in soft plastics. You use rattle and floats. All kinds. I've done it all. But I've never done anything like this is there an edge even if it's just a thing you use every once in a while it's just something to think about so guess what i'll see you on the next one